The convenience yield is an intangible benefit of ownership that confers a benefit to the owner of a consumption commodity like crude oil that I'll illustrate in this example. As a benefit to ownership, it puts downward pressure on the futures or forward price. But unlike the other factors of the cost of carry model like storage, risk-free rate, and dividend, which are all observable and are inputs into the cost of carry, the convenience yield is derived from the cost of carry model by observing the forward price. In previous videos, I explained the cost of carry model that gives us a theoretical forward or futures price based on the net cost of ownership of the commodity in the meantime. So this model says if we want to enter into a long position in a futures contract, which after all is a promise to purchase that commodity in the future and also at a predetermined price, that the price we should expect to pay, the theoretical price, in order to avoid arbitrage is based on the current spot price of the commodity plus any net cost of ownership or cost to carry that commodity in the meantime. And the cost of carry denoted by small c contains up to four factors. We said there are two types of commodities, investment, such as S&P 500 index, versus consumption commodities, like I'm going to use crude oil in this example, although silver was an example of both an investment and consumption commodity, so these categories are not mutually exclusive. Two of the factors increase or put upward pressure on the theoretical futures price because they are costs of ownership. The first one is borrowing cost because regardless of whether it's an investment or consumption commodity, whoever carries or owns the commodity in the meantime it needs to use cash to buy it. They either need to borrow or incur the opportunity cost of their cash. So that borrowing is in red is a basic factor that appears, appears in all the cost of carry models. We denoted that R. For a consumption commodity, I'll just put an R there. For the consumption commodity and storage, we denote that small u. And we said that consumption commodities like oil, but wheat, corn, copper, silver for that matter, in order to store them, that incurs a cost. It's in red. Any storage cost inc is incurred by the current owner pushes up the theoretical futures price. On the other hand, we have two factors that operate in the other direction and pull this down. We had income or dividend denoted by small key, small Q, excuse me. And of course, that's a tangible benefit to the owner and pulls down the theoretical futures price. So the fourth and final factor is analogous to income or dividend, but where income or dividend is tangible, the convenience yield is intangible and somewhat unobserved directly. It is directly unobserved, rather we infer it from the price. But you can see directionally, the convenience yield is a benefit of ownership of the commodity and therefore, like income or dividend, directionally acting the same way, pulls down or is downward pressure on the theoretical futures price. So taking my crude oil as an example, and just imagining some assumptions that we're talking about a nine month oil futures contract where the spot price of crude oil is $65 a barrel. And I think that's roughly true today or approximately in the neighborhood. And we're at the maturity here, 0.75 years is nine months. And we'll assume an interest rate, a risk-free interest rate of 4%. As usual, always per annum as an input. I have denoting that with a small r. And further, continuously compounded because that allows us the elegance of putting the r in the exponent. Similarly, my storage cost is going to be 2% per annum continuously compounded, which we can interpret as a storage cost that is 2% as a constant ratio or proportion of the commodity spot price. So I have my assumptions here in the cost of carry model. Here's my general form where small c is the net cost of carry, meaning I can have up to the four factors. And then in this case, my specific instance of it 
which includes the risk-free rate and the storage cost. And you can see I've just implemented that in Excel, pretty straightforward. And I get the theoretical nine-month futures price of 67.99 or just shy of $68. And notice I've only included factors that are costs of ownership, driving up the theoretical futures price. So just as a sort of gut check intuitively, I should expect to see a higher price. This is one of those things for exams, You uh, sort of a thing to keep in mind. Don't want to get too lost in the weeds. At the end of the calculation, we go back and say, I should have a number that's a little bit above the spot price, which I do, so probably correct. And then notice, I'm emphasizing here the theoretical futures price as a segue into introducing the convenience yield, which doesn't appear here, right? So that's just the final step here. And so the idea with the convenience yield is that with investment assets, we have a clean arbitrage condition. With consumption commodities, where owning the commodity actually converts a convenience, we actually don't have the arbitrage condition anymore. What we have is an upper bound, that that futures price will be less than this value, this net cost of carry before the convenience yield, but it's not an equality. In order to restore the equality, we introduce formally the convenience yield into the balance. Right, So notice the less than or equal to becomes an equal because we introduce the convenience yield denoted small y. And now we can restore the equality. But key difference now is that the theoretical changes to observed. And now, really, in a way, we're taking an observed, oh, excuse me, an observed forward price as an input and we're solving for the convenience yield. So that's the idea, the convenience yield. We say it's not directly observed as an input, it's inferred. The price is reflecting for us a market consensus as to what the convenience of owning this commodity is. And that convenience, again, is an intangible benefit. So the idea is that, well, if I maybe I might, if I'm a participant, I can enter the nine month oil futures contract, but maybe I might need more oil in four months. So this is an option, and this is the optionality. And there may, in fact, be it's convenient. If I think I might need oil, it's more convenient to own oil than it is to be long the futures contract. So ownership is the convenience of the benefit, the optionality of maybe needing them a commodity more than you currently need it. But we quantify it by inferring it from the forward price. So that's why I changed the theoretical to observed. And then actually I'm solving for the convenience yield as a function of that observed forward price, right? And then for some of you, that math will be pretty straightforward, but really I could just take this equality here, divide each side by the spot price, then I'll get E raised to the R plus storage minus convenience, right? And then I can liberate my exponent by taking the natural log of both sides. So I end up with natural log of future of the ratio, future divided by spot, then equals my risk-free rate plus storage minus convenience multiplied by the maturity. And then I can liberate my, or solve for my convenience yield directly by it's going to be R plus U minus the natural log uh, futures minus spot, right? Divided by our times one minus T. Okay, so and now you can see that's the difference all the other factors in the cost of carry go directly in as inputs. But here I'm solving for the convenience using the observed forward price as the information. So that plugs into my convenience yield. And 
Now, let's just say I observe a forward price of $66 instead of 68. What this is telling me is that the market consensus is that there's a positive convenience of 4% to owning the asset. The convenience yield of almost 4% restores the balance in my cost of carry model. We've now got a situation where the forward price is higher than the spot price, what we might call a normal curve or technically a contango, sort of what we expect as more often, but we do have the convenience. And the idea is that the convenience yield reflects the market's expectation about the future availability of the commodity. So let's just say the market becomes more concerned that there will be a shortage in crude oil then this should drive up the convenience yield. And that, in theory, would be evidenced by a lower forward price and a higher convenience yield. So now you can see I have 65 spot, but my futures price is 64. It's actually lower. And this is a situation that we call an inverted um, forward curve, or technically this is a backwardation. And how would we explain it when it costs, when there is actually a positive storage at first glance, this appears to be counterintuitive, but it's the convenience yield that explains it. Market participants may be concerned about shortages. They may prefer the convenience of owning this commodity. And you can notice that in the cost of carry model, as this price comes down, it's explained by a higher convenience yield. And so conversely, if there is a, if the users of the commodity have high inventories and so they become less concerned about shortages, then that should be reflected in something like a higher price where the convenience yield um, drops comes becomes closer to zero, maybe even negative. So that's basically the role of the convenience yield as a plug variable that explains a market consensus view on the benefits, the intangible benefits of owning that commodity. Thank you. If you like this video, please subscribe and you'll get uh, notified of updates.